arthritis? Early osteoarthritis is, in fact, a little difficult to define. Essentially, the first changes are in the cart cartilage itself. We believe usually due to biochemical abnormalities that can occur for a number of reasons. Things such as injury to the cartilage, metabolic change that the metabolism of the cartilage is somehow altered, that the ligaments which support a joint such as the knee are injured, lax, what have you, or finally that the muscles, the thigh muscles, usually the quadriceps muscles that support the knee are weakened and don't therefore give enough support to the knee. Any of these things can lead to osteoarthritis. The cartilage itself is a relatively simple uh, organ. It's uh, at the end of the bones, it's, it's the where the action really occurs in the joint, and there's really only three substances other than water. There are cells, which are called chondrocytes, and then two main substances, a ropey substance called collagen that gives it strength, and a goopy substance which gives it elasticity and shock absorber power called proteoglycan. Now, if any of these are damaged, then you've got the first beginnings of an arthritis. The problem, of course, is that in the adult, the human adult, cartilage can't be repaired. So that once you get damage, very quickly, you're on the road towards a clinical problem. Now, early osteoarthritis, as opposed to osteoarthritis in general, is a little hard to define. Generally, we use an x-ray to confirm osteoarthritis, but if the x-ray is done with the person lying on an x-ray table, probably 75% is missed. And if it's done standing, 40% is missed. So that when you do more sophisticated analyses with, say, uh, magnetic resonance imaging, or MR, that you will find a lot more early cartilage change. One of the most exciting things is that we now think there are ways that we can start to look at the biochemistry itself while having the person, well, leaving the person intact, not having to take some tissue out. And one of the most exciting things currently is that we have new techniques that we believe will allow us to actually look at the biochemistry, what's happening in the cartilage, with the person on a table using very fancy uh, x-ray techniques. Thus we could look at is the ropey collagen intact, is the goopy shock absorbing proteoglycan intact. There are a number of factors that relate to causing osteoarthritis of the knee. The most important that's modifiable is being overweight or worse still obese. If you are, then the risk of osteoarthritis of the knee increases probably at least fourfold. That's 400%. If you are in the very highest level of obesity, it's even higher than that, and you may have an 800% increase in the risk of knee osteoarthritis. Other things that are related to developing osteoarthritis of the knee uh, a sedentary lifestyle. So not being very active, not getting a lot of exercise is not a great thing. Previous knee injury is another factor. So things such as a ACL tear or major knee injury is linked to future down the road osteoarthritis. The other uh, big factor is previous knee surgery. So that we know that having your meniscus removed increases the risk, say, 20 or 30 years down the road of getting osteoarthritis. Then there are a number of factors that we can't do much about. One is age. As we age, the risk of osteoarthritis seems to increase. Being born a woman doubles your risk of osteoarthritis in comparison to being a man. Genetics do appear to be very important and may relate to about 50% of it. So a big family history of osteoarthritis of the knee is not a good thing, but what can you do about it? And finally, if you've got osteoarthritis in one knee, you're at higher risk of getting it 
in the other.